open our hearts that we may receive your words. Open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear. We know that people and the body of Christ walk around with things going on. And we thank Jesus because he knows he walked around with things going around with him. So he understands. Everything we go through, he understands because he's been through it. Rejection, he been through it. Slander, he been through it. Why don't he been through it? Talked about, he been through it. He been through all the things that we've been through. But he says, just come to me and I'll just take it all away from you. And this is what it's all about. The love of Jesus. To take his love and share it with someone else. That's what we're supposed to do in the body of Christ. Take his love. So we thank you, God, for your love. We thank you, Lord God, for your wisdom. We thank you, Lord God, for the shepherd of this church, Lord God, to bless the strength of God. We thank you, Lord God, for more workers coming, Lord God, to the vineyard, Lord God, in the morning, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, to speak your word, our job, when opportunity comes. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all of you.
bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you really believe that, go give two people a great big hug and God bless you. chapter 3, uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 6, amen? amen? Here we go, I'm reading out of the King James Version, for behold, the Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff and the whole bread and the stay of water, so we see that God was pronouncing a judgment. If you read back earlier, you see how uh, Israel had turned their back upon the Lord. And here's what he says. The mighty man, and the man of war, and the judge, and the prophet, and the prudent, and the ancient, and the captain of fifty, and the honorable man, the counselor, and the cunning artificer, and the el eloquent orator, I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. And the oppressed, and the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base, and the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother, uh, when a man shall take hold of his brother, of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In other words, good people don't want to lead. Amen. Let's talk about uh, six attributes of a godly father. 
six attributes of a godly father or biblical examples of fatherhood. Father, I pray that as we go over these, not just that those that are here would hear this word, but those that would hear us in the digital audience, those that would hear the replay, let something be said, let something be imparted unto them, so Lord, that they can become the best father that you have designed them to be. And all God's people that agree with that said, Amen. you may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. hallelujah, or as one said, hallelujah. <laughs> the cornerstone that the family is built upon is the Father. Amen. Amen. Is that you, Brother Chad? God bless you. I, I didn't have my glasses. I couldn't see. God bless you. Let's say amen for Brother Chad amen. Cromer. Amen. amen. Great man of God knows Apostle Paul Sherrill and work with Randy Clark. We're delighted to have you with us, sir. Amen. The cornerstone of the family is built upon the fathers. The United States leads the world in fatherlessness. Fatherhood is essential, of course, to the development of our children. I was surprised to see this on a U.S. congressional website. It actually said this, the increased involvement of fathers in the home leads to better results on a wide variety of outcomes, from economic prosperity increased academic performance to improved social mobility, fathers in their respective homes continues to be an indicator of success for all children across racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. Fatherhood is a proven benefit to society. Yet, America is experiencing an unprecedented father, fatherless crisis. 80% of single parent homes are led by single mothers. 85% of children and teens with behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes. 70% of all adolescents, of all adolescent patients in drug and alcohol treatment programs come from, guess where? Fatherless homes. Troubled children become troubled teens who become troubled adults without any intervention. I work with a ministry uh, also that, de that helps men with addiction. And I'll dare say 90% of them came from a fatherless home. And if they didn't come from a fatherless home, they came from a home where the father was there, but he wasn't there. Amen. The heavens or all creation declares the glory of God. While the role of the mother is absolutely imperative, the role of the father is just as essential. Amen. With the breakdown of the head of the family, the rest of the family becomes prey. You know, I love watching the Discovery Channel. And I used to think that male lions were lazy. <laughs> Anybody ever really watch male lions? Yeah. The women, they go, the lions, they, they go and they hunt. Yeah. And what do the men do? Sleep. <laughs> and when they get back, they're ready to make babies. <laughs> and then I'm like, Lord, why, why do these men seem so lazy? Why do the male lions seem so lazy? It's not that they're lazy. They have a different function. Amen. What do you mean? Listen, the male lion weighs 100 to 150 pounds more than the females. And those big, huge manes make it harder for them to hunt in stealth. But the extra weight and that thick mane helps them do something very important, mm -hmm. protect the pride. Amen. Before we call them too lazy, we also need to understand the reason that they are preserving their strength is because usually those male lions are roaming all night throughout the territory, marking it. Y'all understand what I mean by that? And they are walking some five to eight miles every night. Amen. And I won't 
Well, they have another important activity because there's a lot of lionesses that they need to tend to. Anyway, we'll move on. <laughs> we'll move on. Hallelujah. The male lion is not lazier than the female. He just operates differently because he has a different function. Amen. Real fathers. Okay. Real fathers provide for their families in every way. And the absence of the father leaves the family exposed as a prey psychologically, financially, and spiritually. We just read in Isaiah 3, 6 that the, that the judgment upon or absence upon godly men leading their respective roles is a downfall in society. Verse 4, I'll give children to be their princes. Men who lead you, who have no integrity, no, no morals, no fear of the Lord. Now notice what he says here. Before I go into the acronym on fatherhood, uh, on father. He says the mighty man. This is talking about the warrior, the, the, the man of war. Those that protect and defend the family. How about the champions of the family? And also champions of the community. I can remember growing up. And some of you, if you're over 40, you probably remember this too. You, you knew people who lived on your street. You knew people who lived around the block. And there was somebody who, somebody knew who could help with certain things. You, you, you know, if, 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 if Miss So-and-so, I, I can remember growing up when, when Miss So-and-so down the street had a problem with her car, they went and they talked to Mr. So-and-so. And Mr. So-and-so knew everybody in the community. And he would tell her, he said, listen, I'm going to call over here to what you call it, and, and you go over there, and they're going to help you. And they would. And they wouldn't rip her off. Amen. Amen. Where are the men who are champions in the community, and not just of the family? The judge, as fathers were given to govern the home, Amen. The prophet, as the priest of the home, we should be able to hear God and how to lead our family. The, the captain of 50, uh, 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 the men of influence, the counselor who have the ability to look at things objectively without their emotions. Amen. The cutting artificer and the orator, those who are able to give wisdom and encouragement. And it also talked about the ancient. Amen for the ancient men. I work with a man who's a pastor. And he has been, he's really an apostle. He started, I don't know how many churches, if I were to call off some of the names of the people who he's actually raised up in the Chicagoland area, some of you might know him. But he doesn't take any credit for that. And here he is at, at 80 years old, still giving wisdom and still preaching and still doing everything that he can. I want his energy when I get that age. Amen. Doing everything that he can to share with the next generation his knowledge. Lester Summerall used to say it like this. From zero to 30, a man spends time gaining knowledge. And from uh, 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 30 to about 50 or 60 or so, he spends that time uh, implementing what he's learned. But once he hits that 50 and 60 year old range, he spends time imparting to other young men the things that he has learned. Amen. Amen. We need those men. So let me go real quickly into these six attributes of godly fathers. And the acronym is FATHER, F-A-T-H-E-R, F. F is for a godly father who demonstrates faith. Say faith. Faith. Faith unto his children. Genesis 22, 7 through 8. Here we find Abraham and Isaac gathering wood. <laughs> and Abraham and, and Isaac looks at Abraham and says, Father, I see the wood. I see the altar. But where's the sacrifice? And notice what he said to him. Son, God will provide. Even before they went up on the mountain and they were asking him to say, where, where, where are you getting ready to go do? He said, I and the lad are going to worship and will return. Amen. Amen. We got to be able as men to show that we don't have to put up the facade. 
We can stand against the world. And even when it is that we have pain, it is not weakness to admit I'm frustrated. Talking to men. The ladies say it men better than y'all. It is not a failure or weakness to say I'm frustrated about something. Amen. It is not failure or weakness to say, you know what, I'm actually angry about this. The scripture says be angry, but sin not. You're not weak because you express yourself. Amen. Lord, I had to learn that, and I'm still learning that. I got both hands up. Wife say, you come home, baby, what's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> you all right? Yep. <laughs> Everything good? Sure. <laughs> Amen. We need to open our mouth and talk. Amen. 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 Listen, our children need to see not just mommy on the knees, but they need to see their father. They need to see him leading the people to church. They need to see him. Uh, 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 what, what, I heard someone say this yesterday. They said, if it seems optional for you to go to church, then your children will deem it unnecessary. That's deep. Listen, as our children mature and they face the pressures of life, and when they have to make decisions, what images of us as fathers will they have? When they face trouble, when they face frustration, when they face situation where they're angry, will they just do like they saw daddy do and go out and get drunk? Or will they see a tension in the home? and see like they've seen so many other families do, or they've seen a father and the mother just fighting and squabbling, or will they see them just go out and say, well, I'm out of here, and dad's gone for another six months? Or will they see him standing there saying, you know what? I honestly can't tell you what's going to happen next, but God is going to provide, Amen. and God is going to see us out of this. Let the church say amen. In Genesis 25, verse 31, the Bible said Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. When Isaac's wife went through what she went through, Isaac remembered his father's faith. That word entreated is very interesting because it was not a quick prayer. It means to burn incense as in worship. Mm -mm -mm. Remember, in the tabernacle, you didn't burn incense in the outer court. You went in the inner court or the holy place to do that. In other words, you're not just praying for five minutes. And if you, if you continue to study that word, it means in abundance. So what Isaac was doing, he was remembering his father Abraham pouring out himself unto the Lord in prayer as an incense unto God continually, lavishly, over and over and over again. This is what the image that came back to Isaac's mind. Let the church say amen. A, say A. A. A godly father provides affirmation to his children. Mothers bring the care and the nurturing and the tenderness that only they can bring. But there is something about a father's affirmation. Tell me if I'm wrong. Ladies, you be there with the kids all day. Let daddy come home. Now, they showed you their picture that they drew 500 times. And you told them how beautiful it was. But when daddy came home and he looked at it, if he smiled and rubbed their head and said, that's nice, baby. And then the child, what did they do? They jumped all around the room. Why? Because this is how deep and how strong the affirmation of the father is. Why? To affirm means to declare the truth of something. And this is because of the authority and the ability 
to propel our children forward, the word of the Father carries weight. My old pastor, Bishop Davis, used to say this. <clears throat> First, I thought he was just making it up. But it kind of makes sense if you think about it sometimes, some kind of way. He would talk about the Adam's apple of the male. He said, well, you notice when a baby's first born and they have that soft spot in their head? He said, you know why they have that? He said, it's for the voice of that man to fit into that child. I'll give you another example. When my daughter was born, they had to check her to see if her collarbone was broken. And so she had literally just been born. Now, mind you, while she was in the womb with all our children, I talked to them. And when I talked to them, what they do, jump and kick and all that type of stuff. Now, she was screaming when the nurses came to take her down the hallway to go and get the x-ray. I got up out the chair, ran down the hallway. I grabbed her little hand. She grabbed my finger. All I said was this, don't worry, baby, daddy's here. She instantly stopped crying. The nurses flipped out. They were like, oh my God, how is she able to do this? I said, this isn't the first time she heard my voice. She knows who I am. Let the church say amen. amen. As men, as fathers, our voices carry weight. That's why we have to be mindful how we speak to kids. And especially as dads, and I'm going to get into this in just a little bit, and we're getting to this in the next one, we have to even be mindful, there's a time when we get on them, but we have to be mindful as to how stern we are. Because sometimes as fathers, we can be a little rough. Okay, it's just past it. With that. In Genesis 49, verse 1, Jacob called his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Jacob was dying, but strengthened himself to sit up in the bed and bless his sons. Amen. The next one, T, a godly father demonstrates tenderness to his children. Now, have you ever noticed the reaction of the prodigal son in Luke 15. Here's what it actually says. We, we got the picture of, okay, this guy, he had left his father's house. He went, he was, li he was, living, in, in, he was living an immoral life. And he says, I'll go to my father and I can, I can live better as a servant if I just go back to my father. And we have this image of him just running and coming to his father. But that's not what the Bible says. Listen to what it says. In Luke 15, 20, it says, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son was wrong. The son purposefully did what he did with his inheritance. And when he realizes what he's done wrong, he says, I'm going back to my father. But when his father saw him coming in the field, he didn't stand there all proud, like, I told you this was going to happen. No. He ran toward him with compassion, and he grabbed his neck, and he hugged him, and he kissed him. Listen to Colossians 3.21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Listen to the Amplified Bible. Fathers, do not provoke or irritate or exasperate your children with demands that are trivial or unreasonable or humiliating or abusive, nor by favoritism or indifference. Treat them tenderly with loving kindness so they will not lose heart and become discouraged or unmotivated with their spirits broken. Said a whole lot right there. Even when it comes to the discipline of our children, we cannot break their spirit. Amen. 
You know, when they do wrong, it's not always the time to lose it. Amen? Amen. This is my oldest son right here in the purple. One day, and I had been on him about going to work. This was years ago. And I had been on him about staying out late after he got off work. Particularly because I really didn't like the crowd that he was with. And one day, we get a call that he had been in a car accident. And so we rush and we get there. What happened was his brand new Camaro hit black ice, went down in a ditch. It was a miracle because he should have hit that log and been dead. But somehow God stopped the car. Am I correct? I get out. I see this. You would think after seeing what the Lord just did, What's the first thing out of my mouth? What did I tell you? And the officer who was on the scene rebuked me. Yes, he did. He rebuked your pastor. Am I right? Hear what he said. He said, sir, we got plenty of time for that. Your son is alive. And all of a sudden, it clicked. I know. I'm the only one guilty of stuff like this. I can remember doing some of the, one of the worst things I ever could have done as a kid. And I remember coming home thinking, this is the day I'm going to see the Lord. My father is literally going to knock my head off my shoulders. Hmm. I really felt that. And I'm waiting for the impact. I'm, re I'm, 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 I'm bracing. I'm, 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 he was a light-skinned man, but when he would get upset, he turned red. Red as that bitch. And he walks up to me, and he says, uh, you hungry? I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you hungry? And I'm thinking to myself, you ain't going to yell? <laughs> You're not going to scream? You're not going to get upset? I'm not grounded? No back? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> and here's what he did. That man sat down and talked to me in a way that made me feel so loved. I never even thought about doing that again. Am I making sense? His tenderness actually moved me to make better decisions instead of fearing the wrath to come. God is like that. Jeremiah 31.3, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. He's not sitting up in heaven with a lightning bolt in his hand saying, just do it one more. That's not who he is. Yes, fathers provide discipline and correction, but it's balanced with wisdom and direction. Sometimes the best solution after a huge mistake is affection, which further impacts the child by letting them know, no matter how bad it was, you still belong to me. As a very famous preacher who was preaching in certain circles, and he, if I call his name, he's on just about every station right now. And his daughter came home pregnant. And his daughter said she just knew my father's going to end up losing his job and everything, this, this, that, and the other. But she said she was shocked by how much he loved her. 
And the way that he embraced her overcame all the embarrassment, the shame, and the condemnation. And do you not know she is a pastor now? Am I talking all right? H, a godly father demonstrates hard work to his children. 1 Chronicles 28, 11 through 12 says, Then David gave to his son Solomon the pattern of the porch and the houses thereof, and the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit. Solomon did not just receive the blueprints of how to build the house of the Lord, but an impartation of the same passion that his father had for it. Fathers teach the value of hard work and appreciating what you have so you don't have a sense of entitlement as if somebody owes you something. Amen. Fathers don't just teach you hard work, but they teach you how to work smart. Amen. Uh, I can remember, I'll pick on Marlon again, it's his day. <laughs> When he had, uh, he was working a particular job and he was going to school and the hours were real, real late and she was concerned. She was like, I don't like him coming in that late. You know, maybe he need to do something. I said, let him do it. Let him do it. Why? Because he ended up buying his own car. He ended up buying his own clothes. And then he ended up getting better jobs. And the reason why he needed to go through that was so he could get to the place where he wouldn't have to go back to that anymore. Amen. 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 Too often we spare our children from what help make us tough times. Amen. Amen. Because the tough times are step. Sometimes they need to do it on their own. Sometimes they need to find their own way without our interference. Because the same way God provided for us, he'll provide for them. But if we keep getting in the way, we handicap them. E, a godly father is an example to his children and family. Remember Philip the Evangelist? Acts 21, verse 8 through 9. We entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven. The same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. He was one of the seven. What do you mean one of the seven? Remember when the apostles chose uh, uh, those men to take care of the business with, with uh, the ministration of the, uh, of the food. They were chosen in Acts 6, 3, men of honest uh, report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Guess what? These are some good attributes of a godly father as well. Philip turned Samaria upside down in cities for Jesus. But scripture also noted that all of his daughters were virgins and they prophesied. My greatest accomplishments will not be going to nations and preaching to multitudes and all of the miracles that we've seen and yet to see. But it will be my children taking the legacy of their father and being an example to their generation and impacting this world. Here's what Bishop Nicholas Duncan Williams said from Ghana. He said, life is not about happiness, but leaving a godly legacy and a standard for generations yet unborn. God has designed families in such a way to perpetuate his blessing, to perpetuate his goodness, to perpetuate an example of who he is, not foolishness. We don't need any more third generation drunks or whoremongers or shysters. We need some third generation prophets, some third generation intercessors, some third generation godly men and women. Are. Well, that was E. E was example. R, you good? R, a godly father is reliable. Say reliable. Ooh. Come 
Come on, computer, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. All right. Hebrews 3, 3 verse 2 says, Moses was faithful in all his house. Proverbs 28, 20 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings. People often say man of God, but the key to that is this. If you're not a man first, you're not a man of God. If you're not a man first, you're not a man of God. In other words, it implies there is a maturity that comes first. One of the biggest needs your wife and your children have is security, is security and consistency. They need to be able to trust you. And there is nothing more unsettling when a man won't be consistent. Inconsistent in his emotions. Sometimes he's up, sometimes he's down. You never know when he's going to come around. He's like, what, what is it, almond joy? Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> we cannot be inconsistent in our emotions and our affections. Sometimes you feel like talking, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want to play, you want to joke, sometimes it's like, leave me alone. <laughs> We cannot be inconsistent in our emotions, affections, or finances. I, I used to work with Brother Dan, and one of the things that we did, we went into all of the uh, high schools and junior high in Aurora, and one day a a uh, high school counselor called me and said, listen, we got this kid that you see on a regular basis. He threw a chair at a teacher. Can you come? Because we're about to call the police. I said, have the police hold on. I'll be right there. And when I got there, I said, what happened? And he looked at me. He said, well, Mr. So-and-so said blah, blah, blah. I said, have they ever said that to you before? He said, yeah. I said, so that means you threw the chair at them? Well, yeah. I said, so obviously Mr. So-and-so is not the problem. And as we dove deeper into that, here was the issue. The boy didn't live with his father. And his father had always been making these promises that he was not keeping. He had told his father he made the basketball team, and his dad promised him he was going to be there with, no new, with new shoes. Guess what happened? First basketball came, dad wasn't there, shoes didn't make it either. So the teacher ended up being the brunt of this boy's anger. And I gave him some tips on how to approach his dad. I said, listen, I want you to approach your dad man to man. I want you to say blah, blah, blah to him. He did. I saw him a month later. He called me in the hallway. I looked at him. He looked like a different child. He said, I did what you told me. And I wish it always happened like this, because it doesn't. But he said, I talked to my dad like you told me. He said, now, Look, I got my new shoes, and, he, and he's been coming to my games, and all my grades have come up. I'm not failing anything anymore. I only got one C. He was getting all left. Amen. Amen. I'll give you this last story, and then I'll finish. I told you I wasn't going to be before you long. There was a teacher who decided she was going to give, she wanted to try to the, test the aptitude of a particular young child. And so she gave this child a puzzle. She wanted the child to put together a puzzle with all these pieces of the nations of the world. Child probably couldn't even spell half the countries. So here's what happened. She took the, took the puzzles out the, took the puzzle out the box, set it there before the child. Child sat there, looked at it, looked at the box, looked at the thing, and put it together in astounding speed. She looked at the child and said, this is incredible. How did he do this this fast? So she said, come here. Tell me so-and-so how you put this puzzle together so fast. He said, well, ma'am, I looked at the box, and I noticed the puzzle was two-sided. It had a map of the world on one side, but on the other side, it had the face of this man. 
So I put together the image of the man. And as I put together the image of the man, the cities came together. And as I kept putting the man together, the nations came together. You catch that? As we build the man and restore him, the cornerstone of the family, now we can rebuild the nations. Now we can rebuild the cities. Now we can rebuild communities. Let the church say amen. 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 Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for each and every father that's under, every man that's under the sound of my voice that's watching by either replay or either live. Lord, you know the struggles that we go through and the pain and the hurts of our heart. Father, we give them to you. And we ask that you would come and reveal yourself unto us as never before, as we seek you as never before. Lord, open our eyes that we might see in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that the tenderness that we need to comfort our wives, to love them, to help make them whole, as well as our children. Father, deal with us in the way that only you can. In Jesus' mighty name. And all that agree with that sin.